What I really like about Leadership Circle Profile and the model is that it talks about the stages of development. So where are you on your journey? And it's an opportunity and potential based instrument over a you're never going to make it or it's not in your genes. What attracted me to becoming an executive coach or the, the work of executive coaching is actually having been an executive myself. And I spent a lot of time in the boardroom and on management teams and leading others. And I realized that it's very easy to read books, to talk about leadership and to be in agreement about being self-aware. But actually doing it is super difficult because we're all humans and uh, we have our habits. So I know firsthand that it's very difficult to stay aware all the time, uh, even though it's super important. So an executive coach can really help you in becoming more self-aware and becoming the best version of yourself. And it also is a, a go-to point or a go-to person uh, because often as an executive, you are kind of lonely. It can be a lonely position. So it's very uh, helpful and, and also, you know, sometimes warming to have an executive coach to, uh, to go to. I think that during the pandemic, lots of gaps in leadership skills uh, became more evident, became more to, uh, came more to the surface. But I think that leadership and, and leading others has been something that has been important throughout the ages, uh, throughout the centuries, has always been important. And uh, recently I read something about the Stoics. And even then, it was 2000 years ago, people spoke about how times are changing and how challenges of society are here. So I really think that leadership has been important and will remain to be important. The difference that I see or that I notice is the pace at which things happen, perhaps stating the obvious. But that, I think, is the, the most pressing challenge for leaders uh, of today because you are expected to respond quickly in the moment. And the fact that you are a leader no longer guarantees that people will listen to you. Maybe in the old days, earlier centuries, you just listen to the king and you listen to the boss and you listen to the elder or the queen. Uh, but in these times, you have to prove your worth every single time. Uh, so, so that's a difference, I would say. I used to be a, a CHRO, so I used to work with, let's say, organizations like Leadership Circle at the other side of the, of the table. And of course, many assessors and many companies pitched their product as this is the most interesting or the best tool to measure or to work with. When I became an executive coach, I got an assignment and it was required that I would work with Leadership Circle Profile. And then I thought, well, let's see. I hadn't heard of it. So let's see. Uh, it's probably one of the many tools. But what I quickly discovered is that it is different and I wish I had known it before. The reason being, I really like the scientific backing of the leadership circle, but in the model itself, what I like most is the non-judgmental part of it. What we tend to do as human beings or in organizations is to quickly categorize or to put people in boxes. You're a good leader, bad leader, you are uh, uh, good at this and bad at that. And I, I really find it unhelpful to speak about good and bad. Um, so what I really like about Leadership Circle Profile and the model is that it talks about the stages of development. So where are you on your journey? And it's an opportunity and potential based instrument over a, well, you're never gonna make it or uh, it's not in your genes or that's, that's not the language that's being used. Um, so that's what I love about it. What I also like about it is that it's round. It is literally a circle that could be used for lots of metaphors, but is actually full circle. So that's also what I, what I like. 
don't suppose I would end up in a conversation with a CEO of a company and I would explain it to her or him as such that the leadership circle profile is a tool. It's basically a 360 degree assessment, including a self-assessment, which shows where the development potential is for the leaders and it creates a shared language. So it starts really a dialogue about where is it that you want to focus your energy because I believe that what you focus your energy on that grows. So, and I would hope that people would focus their energy on something positive. So that's how I would uh, describe it. Of course, I would back it up with the numbers, right? Because there's a, an endless database of numbers that Leadership uh, Circle puts under their, um, I would say, marketing or under their support. But the fact that thousands and thousands of leaders and companies are using it globally helps a lot. So depending on basically the coaching question of the organization, I'm using one or the other. When I talk about individual one-to-one -one coaching, obviously you would go for the leadership circle profile because that is an individual tool. What I do there is, for example, onboarding coaching. That's what I do for executives that either were appointed into a new role in a, in a company or move jobs from one executive role to the next. What I sometimes do is I use the leadership circle profile as a starting point for those dimensions and those leadership traits that they are good at or they were good at in their previous role, what made them successful. And to use the leadership circle profile to then look at what is it that of those dimensions you think you could deploy in the new environment as well, or would this new environment ask for something else, ask for a different dimension or different attention or focus on one of these dimensions. So that is one way I'm using it as a starting point for a conversation. What I also sometimes do is to just use the self-assessment of the leadership circle profile to trigger the conversation, just to get into new ways of thinking about someone's leadership, because some executives if they are used to working in a certain way, they might be stuck in that direction or in that particular style. And the Leadership Circle Profile shows you in a very friendly way what else is there that you could potentially develop, what you could choose as area of development. And um, with the self-assessment, what then often happens, of course, is that people are curious how other people would rate them. And then we sometimes, after a couple of months, at the end, for example, of a coaching trajectory, we take a full LCP and then including the debrief, of course. So, that, so that's how I use it. So that's for individual. For team coaching, for working with teams, the CLA that I'm using, I apply that actually for lots of, lots of various um, coaching questions. So it could be for to make a team aware of what they create together in terms of leadership, potentially self-assessment, but also in the same way as you could use the LCP, I then use the CLA as a 360 degree assessment. And you would be surprised how different the results can be when you put a group of leaders that went through an LCP, when you put them together and then do a CLA, how different the dynamic can be that people create together. What I, what I really like about Pulse is that it not only helps my coaching practice, because I mean, any tool, uh, and I consider this as a tool for conversation, not the conversation itself, but this tool also helps to create something to create, let's say a feedback muscle in an organization itself. So I like the fact that uh, the subject to the pulse or the coachee is getting regular feedback. But what I also like is that this accountability circle that you create for this pulse um, uh, surveys, uh, that accountability circle also thinks, hey, oh yes, maybe I can ask for feedback myself, or maybe think about 
what would it be if I were subject of such survey or of such pulse? What kind of behavior would I want to be acknowledged for or uh, rated against? Or So what I like is it, it elevates the, the consciousness about feedback. And if this were to become, let's say, a habit in an organization, it creates more and more the habit of uh, giving feedback and normalize that. Yes, and providing you with an answer also probably says something about my own profile, right? I find the, let's say, complying and controlling reactive tendencies, for me personally, wonderful ways of getting into deep dialogue with the coaches. The ones that I find challenging more is the ones that are more in the protecting, in particular distant. And the reason for that being uh, because my heart and joy is in making conversation and really connecting and, and really tapping into, hey, what's going on for you? And sometimes when people demonstrate behavior that is more distant, that exactly is the part that they're shielding from connecting right it's a, it serves as a as a coping mechanism uh, for something so there i struggle a bit more um, without generalizations because that's not the case for all profiles i mean but i remember i recall one in particular where that distant or distance showed up and uh, and it really took me a while to to get to the next level so to say with that coaching It was about, I think, 25 years ago when I coincidentally attended a lecture of hers uh, when she was in the Netherlands. And I got inspired then by her, by her warmth and by her strength and by the fact that she has a very clear idea of what she thinks is necessary without becoming, let's say, aggressive or very vocal about it. So. Her one of her books is called, it's, it's actually, it's over there. It's called Hope for the Future. One of her books really speaks to the fact that every single individual on a daily basis makes an impact and that what you do really makes a difference on a day-to-day -day basis. So she really pointed out that every single human being makes a difference. And that's also the source of inspiration for executive coaching. Because if an executive has a bad day, that could potentially lead to a, but a much more negative impact than when a single individual that doesn't lead other people has a bad day. So in, in this particular case for Jane Goodall, I am inspired because she inspires me to continue on my own or with others or seek the collaboration and to stay curious about other people. Uh, people's opinions, even though you might not agree with them. If you stay curious, you keep the dialogue going, and then we create less, let's say, polarity, less polarization, uh, and more unity and harmony. <laughs>